In this video, we're going to explore what's BLE, which stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. The ESP32 chip comes not only with Wi-Fi, but it also has Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy. In this video, we'll cover the basics of Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE terminology, and server and client interaction. Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard for exchanging data over short distances. Just like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth also operates at 2.4 GHz. Bluetooth is used in many different applications that require wireless communication and control, like transmitting audio to headphones or a car, communication between peripherals and a PC, transferring data between Bluetooth-enabled devices, and many other applications. Devices use Bluetooth in point-to-point -point communication that requires a continuous connection to transmit data. Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE for short, is a power-conserving variant of Bluetooth. BLE's primary application is short-distance transmission of small amounts of data, and it's aimed at very low power applications running off a coin cell. Unlike Bluetooth that is always on, BLE remains in sleep mode constantly, except for when a connection is initiated. This makes it consume very low power. This feature is extremely useful in machine-to-machine -machine communication, because you can have small devices powered with batteries that last for a very long time. This makes it perfect for applications that need to exchange small amounts of data periodically, like in healthcare, fitness, tracking, beacons, security and home automation industries. You can go to this link and take a look at this table to analyze in more detail the differences between Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy. Let's get started with a practical example. With Bluetooth Low Energy there are two types of devices, the server and the client. For this example, the ESP32 acts as a server and the smartphone as a client. Note that your ESP32 can act as a client or as a server. The same can be said to the smartphone. Taking a look at the server. The server advertises its existence, so it can be found by other devices, and contains the data that a client can read. The client scans the nearby devices, and when it finds the server is looking for, it establishes a connection and listens for incoming data. This is called point-to-point -point communication. There are also other possible scenarios in which BLE can be used. For example, in broadcast mode, the server transmits data to many clients that are connected, or in a mesh network, where all the devices are connected. This is a many-to-many -many connection. Even though the broadcast and mesh network setups are possible to implement, they were developed very recently, so there aren't many examples implemented for the ESP32 at this moment. So we'll be using the point-to-point -point communication for our examples. Now let's take a look at some important terms when it comes to BLE. GATT stands for Generic Attributes, and it defines an hierarchical data structure that is exposed to connect BLE devices. This means that GATT defines the way that two BLE devices send and receive standard messages. The top level of the hierarchy is a profile, which is composed of one or more services. Every service contains at least one characteristic, or can also reference other services. The characteristic is always owned by a service, and it is where the actual data is contained in the hierarchy. The characteristic always has two attributes. Characteristic declaration, that provides metadata about the data, and the characteristic value. Additionally, the characteristic value can be followed by descriptors, which is further expand on the metadata contained in the characteristics declaration. Each service characteristic and descriptor have a new UID, universally unique identifier, a new UID is a unique 120-bit number. There are shortened UUIDs for all types, services and profiles specified in the SIG, which is the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. But if your application needs its own UUID, you can generate them using this UUID generator website. 
In summary, the UUID is used for uniquely identifying information. For example, it can identify a particular service provided by a Bluetooth device. You can explore this page that provides more standard services. It's also possible to create other services that are not contained in this list. Let's take a look at the battery service. The battery service is used in most battery-powered BLE devices to indicate the current battery level in percentage. This enables the applications that are connected to that BLE device to instantly know the battery level regardless of the manufacturer, because they are using the unique service ID that refers to the battery level. As we've seen before, each service can have one or more characteristics. The characteristic is a data value transferred between a client and a server. The battery service provides the battery level characteristic that returns the battery level as a percentage, from 0 to 100%. So, if you have a BLE device with battery, your smartphone that is connected to that device can see the battery level in percentage, because it's a well-known service with a standard characteristic. A characteristic can also have different properties. For example, the battery level is read-only, and that's a mandatory requirement. You can also have a notify activated or not, it's optional. Depending on the characteristic type, it will have different properties, and we'll explore that subject in future videos. Here's a representation of a diagram for a battery service with a battery level characteristic. Understanding this hierarchy is important, because it will make it easy to understand how to use the BLE and write your applications. That's it for now. This is just the basic theory behind the BLE device and the interactions between a client and a server. We've also covered some standards that you need to pay attention when it comes to BLE. It's important to say that we've just scratched the surface of BLE, and there are many other concepts to explore. This video just covers some of the features that are relevant for our projects. I strongly encourage you to read the Wikipedia page that contains more information about BLE. Don't forget to scroll down to the bottom of the page and take a look at the references section for a more in-depth reading. You should also use the website bluetooth.com as a reference, because it contains the standard services and UUIDs that you should use in BLE devices and applications. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.